conditions. Once we're in the realm of approximate dynamic programming, if you're going to do it with value iteration, if you're going to do it with a reinforcement learning algorithm, let's say you've, you've done a lot of work, you've let your neural network train overnight, and you've got a new controller that's coming out, and you want to deploy it, right? So um, there's also a, a second step of just understanding if the training you've done, if the approximation you've done is good enough, right? So, so checking of whether this, you know, will it comp accomplish the task, will it be stable, is going to be a, a strong motivator for certifying uh, even our approximate controllers. Okay, so <clears throat> this idea of sufficiency or just I want to accomplish the task, pick up the object, stick the landing, is closely related and often formulated through the lens of stability analysis. It's not an obvious thing, but that just happens that the tools that have grown up from stability analysis can sort of be generalized in an appropriate way, and <clears throat> they tend to be a, a language that's strong enough to talk about even accomplishing much more general tasks, right? So like, um, you know, did I pick up the chalk correctly? Well, I could just say, <laughs> as time goes to infinity, is the chalk in the fixed point in my fingers? Okay, and that's sort of a, that's a good surrogate for uh, accomplishing the task of picking up the chalk. And we'll see many more generalizations like that. So I'm going to jump from this abstract notion of accomplishing a task to start talking about you know, fixed points of dynamical systems, and we'll work back up at, after we've mastered the basics. OK, so let me start by, um, you know, again, I always kind of go back to the systems we know and then ratchet back up. But we talked about the stability of the pendulum as one of our initial examples. I want to give you a more general set of nonlinear tools, especially for, with Lyapunov functions, to think about first the stability of the pendulum and then we'll apply it to more complicated systems. Okay, so stability. of the damped pendulum. So my equations of motion, we almost know by heart by now, is B theta dot minus MGL sine theta. I'm going to say um, no control right now, just pass it first. We said, you know, one of the opening ideas was I would like to talk about the long-term dynamics of this system, but uh, I don't even know how to integrate the equations of motion, right? I can't tell you what theta of t is uh, for this differential equation. But I'm still pretty sure that if I have a damped pendulum and I start it here, if as time goes to infinity, I'm pretty sure it's going to go down to the fixed point at the bottom. So what's the general way to think about that argument and make that argument? And the one that I hope is natural to you is to think about the energy of the system, right? So let's make an energy-based argument. try to be precise about what exactly we can and can't say about this. Okay, so the mechanical energy of this system, the passive system, is just one half mv squared, which is L, v is just L theta dot, so you get it's one half mv squared, looks like this, um, and then minus mgl cos theta, which is the energy we used to derive that originally. 
and you know the contours of energy we've plotted on the face portrait. So this is, a, this is something we can think about a lot, I think. <clears throat> What's the argument going to look like if I want to say, use something about the energy to say that this fixed point at the bottom is stable? Right? The idea is natural. I'd like to say that if I have friction in the system, right, this, if B is greater than zero here, I've got a damped pendulum with friction. That means I would expect that energy is always going to go down. Right? Moreover, the energy is minimized at the fixed point at the bottom. Right, so I want to be precise now about those statements. Let's line up a, a, a chain of arguments that say if the energy is always going down, roughly, and the energy obtains its minimum at the bottom, then, that sh then using the energy should be a way for me to say something like if I watch until time goes to infinity, I'm going to find myself at the, at the fixed point at the, bit, the base. Okay. So let's think about how we're going to say that. Energy going down means the time derivative of energy, which I can just take the time derivative of that function. Right? I'm going to take, I get two of this, I get ML squared theta double dot times theta dot for that first one, and then minus, um, sorry, plus theta dot MGL sine theta. Okay? So that doesn't look immediately consumable, but let's substitute the dynamics in. So it turns out that ML squared double dot I know is part of the dynamics, and if I can stick the rest of this in, I'll just substitute ML squared theta double dot over there for this side on the other, on the other side. So <clears throat> this is just negative b theta dot plus mgl sine theta. Plus, I'm going to be off by a sign here. I'm off by a sign, so I'm going to be figured out. So this thing's going to be multiplied by theta dot. This should be m minus, I guess, because those terms definitely cancel. This term cancels with this term, and I'm left over with negative b theta dot squared. turns out that even though it's a complicated equation there, dE dt actually just comes down to negative b theta dot squared. The total energy of this system, this thing is always greater than or equal than negative mgl, because that's a squared, so that's always positive term. This thing I've got it minus MGL. And this one, the derivative, time derivative, is always less than or equal to zero. So we're on our way. But actually, it's less than or equal to zero, not strictly less than zero. So that's a pretty subtle, that gets to be a more subtle argument, right? So the energy, I said, is always going down. That's not quite true. When velocity is zero, the energy is not going down. So that, of course, happens at the fixed point, but that also happens you know, here, here, if I you know, freeze frame every time I swing around. Right? There's lots of places where the energy stops going down. Okay, so it's only less than or equal to zero. So what can I say, um, you know, what does that allow me to say about stability in some rigorous way? Right, you should think of this as a function Let me draw it in 3D here. So right, theta, theta dot, e dot, right? This is some function over the space, over my state space, 
but it's a, and it's a negative definite function, but it's only negative definite in one axis, so it's got a trough like this. See what I'm trying to draw there? Right, it's a, it's a whole manifold of zero solutions with that thing going down. So what does that tell me about the long-term approach to E? I'd like to say something like, you know, E goes to MGL, negative MGL. But I'm not quite there yet because it doesn't always go downhill. I need to make something more subtle. Okay, but this general line of thinking and the tools that we're going to leverage to to conclude things about the long-term behavior of E and X. I think this energy notion and this inspiration from a pendulum of using energy as a sort of a quantity that we're going to track <clears throat> is extremely good, but it, it's, a, it's part of a much more general toolkit of Lyapunov analysis, okay? So, the, so in order to understand our total, what we can say about that less than or equal to zero, I want to generalize this a little bit. use this energy-like function, but we'll use the Lyapunov functions. Lyapunov analysis. There's a well of theorems that'll tell me what I can say when I have only less than or equal to zero and things like that, okay? So <clears throat> what's a Lyapunov function? If I have a continuous differential equation, x dot equals f of x, nonlinear, not, Lyapunov methods shine in places where other methods can't go, you know, which includes these nonlinear systems. <clears throat> There's no u here yet. We're just talking about closed loop systems. We'll talk about Lyapunov tools for control soon, but <clears throat> you can think of this as you know, the system that's passive, or you could think about this as the system where I've already inserted my controller in, and I'm analyzing the dynamics of the closed loop system with the plant and the controller. <clears throat> Our goal is to prove stability, or so analyze stability of some fixed point x star, and typically in Lyapunov analysis, we'll just, without loss of generality, we'll just move the Lyapunov function so that um, we'll change the coordinates as necessary to make that fixed point be the origin. The same way we started with a theorem with a uh, cost-to-go function saying if I can con produce a cost-to-go function, here I'm going to say if I can produce a function, it's got to be differentiable again, V of x such that <clears throat> I want for all x not equal to 0, I want V of x to be greater than 0. And I'd like V of 0 to equal 0. And then I'd like to say for all x not equal to 0, there's many different flavors of this, but the one that we need right now is the one that says that our, um, our time derivative, v dot dv dt, right, time derivative, less than or equal to zero. A 
Okay. By the way, this is a notation of this. this we, we're going to we're going to use this notation often, and I'm good, there's a shorthand for it. If we say that a, a function is positive everywhere except at the origin and zero at the origin, we often will call these positive definite functions. So I'll write this from now on as just using the positive definite symbol. So I'll write that. And similarly, you can have positive semi-definite functions for you can have negative definite, negative semi-definite functions. Okay, so I just write this as v of x greater than zero. V dot of x less than or equal to zero. Just instead of saying yeah, all of those conditions, that's the shorthand. Okay, if I can find that function, then x star equals zero is, guess what, stable in the sense of Lyapunov, ISL. Not surprising that a Lyapunov function could be able, useful to prove um, stability in the sense of IS, uh, in the sense of Lyapunov, right? You remember the different definitions. So the stable ISL said that for every epsilon, there exists a delta. It's so that if you pick initial condition, I can, if you give me an epsilon, I can give you a delta so that if I pick an initial condition inside this delta ball, then for all t greater than or equal to zero, x of t minus x star is in the epsilon ball. So let's see if we can connect, understand why um, those conditions are sufficient to prove that. The game is I'm going to pick some region of state space, I'll call it my epsilon ball. This is inside here is x is less than epsilon. I've said x star is, is 0, so I'm just simplifying to x is less than epsilon. <clears throat> and you need to pick a delta, some, some other ball inside here. How does the existence of this function help you do it? Think about our energy function, right? We had level sets of the energy that looked like contours like this. They could be arbitrary shapes um, in, in the general case, but this was for the pendulum, energy equals constant one energy equals constant 2. These are the level sets of the energy function. If I have some function, if this is v of x equals some constant, let's call it rho, if I, if I know that it's greater than 0 and 0 at the origin, then at least at the origin, there's going to be some of these level sets. And right? I'm going to have some level sets that I could find. And moreover, if I know that v dot is less than 0, always less than or equal to 0, then I know that even though I can simulate complicated trajectories, 
They'll never go outside. I'll never increase in V. So every level set of V is, a, is an invariant set. That's what they're called. Okay? I can never leave the orbits of V if I have V dot is less than zero for all X. Does that make sense? They could be arbitrary shape. I could have, you could give me some crazy Lyapunov function such that this is like, you know, inside here is V of X less than or equal to three, okay? I don't even, you know, it could be sines and cosines or whatever. But if you tell me that V dot of X is always less than or equal to zero, then I know as the trajectories evolve, it could do all kinds of crazy things, but it'll never leave that region. It'll never go outside. If this is, if this is V of X greater than um, three out here, it'll never visit those sets, that set. That turns out to be exactly the tool I need to talk about Lyapunov uh, stability, right? There's going to be these level sets. As long as V is positive around the origin, there's going to be some of these level sets. Okay? What I need to do is I need to find the level set that is completely contained inside my epsilon ball. I don't even have to find the levels. I just find any level set that's completely contained inside that ball. Okay? And then I know that if I, that if I start inside that region, I'll stay inside that region. Since we use the language in our simple theorem of, of balls, there's no V in the simple theorem. If I can find some region here described in a complicated function V, then I can also find a smaller, you know, I could find a ball that sits inside V, the V level set, right? So this, this region here in white is less than epsilon. This region here, is v of x is less than some constant rho, where the boundary is that line there. If I can find that, then I can find a, this, you know, a, a, some circle that fits in completely inside that region. Because if I start in, now if I start in red, I don't know that I stay in red. That wasn't guaranteed by anything. But I'll stay at least in blue. Okay, and so I definitely won't leave white. It checks, I promise. A couple levels of indirection. Okay, so this is exactly, that, that seemingly obscure notion of stability that we gave you before is directly connected by the existence of having this Lyapunov function. Okay, there can be many Lyapunov functions that prove stability. In fact, that's one of the great things. That's why it's easier to find a Lyapunov function than it is to find a cost to go function because there's lots of it. If your system is stable, there's actually lots of Lyapunov functions that'll prove it. Okay? There's only one cost to go function. You have to work hard to find it. There's lots of Lyapunov functions. Okay, so that's the first round of mechanics. Is that okay? Ask questions if you have them. You should try to think of, po I mean, like, um, there's a route you can go down, you, if you choose, it's not for everybody, I guess, but of just all the possible counterexamples you can come up with these kind of things, right? So, um, and there's great books we we'll talk about all, you know, all the theories that back up Lyapunov analysis. You, we, we have to smooth some things about, we assume some things about the smoothness of the system. We don't, you know, the system's not allowed to jump arbitrarily uh, with continuous dynamics. That's you know, there's, there's, you can make this theorem very precise, and you can think about all the possible things that could go wrong. Like, what if someone gave me a V that just kind of went up a little bit and then was flat, you know? But that's, it all still works, I promise. There's technical conditions that make it work, but I hope you're thinking about the nuances of going into that, uh, that statement. But people have gone through those nuances, and they've given us this basic theorem, okay? If you can find a V, then the system is stable in the sense of Lyapunov. 
OK, so the existence of an energy function for the pendulum, if I choose, for the pendulum, if I choose v of x is um, energy, I guess I'll have to add mgl just to make it equal to 0 to fit the theorems or whatever. Then this tells me that at least the, down, the energy function is used as a certificate to say that the downward equilibrium is stable in the sense of Lyapunov. That's not super satisfying because we know it should be more, it should be more stable than that, right? It's, it's not stable in the sense of Lyapunov. Even the undamped pendulum, remember, was stable in the sense of Lyapunov. The damped pendulum should be more stable than that, right? So there's some, we need something more, and we'll, we'll get it in just a second. What would it take to talk about asymptotic stability? Do we have to throw this toolbox out and start anew, or is there you know, a simple modification to talk about asymptotic stability? Asymptotic stability said that um, the limit as t goes to infinity of x of t is infinity. The Apinov says you, you, if you start close, you'll stay close. It doesn't say you'll converge. Asymptotic stability. And asymptotic stability says you'll eventually converge. Ah, oh, good, thank you. That would be the opposite of stability. Thank you for catching that. X goes to zero, yes, or X goes to X star. <laughs> I'd like to say I was just testing you, but I just missed that one. It turns out a simple change in the Lyapunov conditions says if you can find me a v of x greater than 0 and v dot of x strictly less than 0, you know, negative definite, which means it's 0 at the origin, but negative everywhere else then this can imply asymptotic stability. Now, I want to be a little bit careful here. There's, there's, um, there are different types of asymptotic stability. You can have local asymptotic stability, which just says, if you start nearby, I'm going to converge um, as time goes to infinity. You can have regional asymptotic stability, saying that I've got, if I, there's a basin of attraction for any, some region, I will converge. And then there's global asymptotic stability, saying from any initial x, I'll converge. Okay. This one here, you know, each of those requires some, some slight conditions. Okay. So local asymptotic stability just says if there's any epsilon ball, you know, if there's any, any neighborhood around the origin where these conditions are hold, hold, that's enough to say that the system is asymptotically, locally asymptotically stable. If these conditions are met, some neighborhood
But you can use these same functions to talk about global stability, global asymptotic stability. You'll see people use gas. In, in papers, you'll just read, you know, such and such gas. It's like, okay, global asymptotic stability, yeah? Um, if this holds for all x. But there's one extra condition that you have to, you know, when you think about all these possible counterexamples, right, there's one extra condition that you need. to get global stability. Um, yeah, so, so you have to make sure that the system is uh, radially unbounded, which is basically that um, V of X goes to infinity when the when x goes to infinity otherwise you get into these weird counterexamples where you could you can be going you can have v dot going downhill but you're actually escaping to infinity you're just going down you're you're escaping to infinity faster than you're going downhill it's um you know there are there, i actually put the famous example in the notes too if you care about it but this is a technical condition. Most functions, you know, will nicely go to infinity um, as x goes to infinity. Okay, but there is an extra technical condition. Okay, so that's pretty cool. So now I have um, I have the ability to actually say that the system is stable if I have a, a strictly negative definite function. I don't have that for the pendulum though. The pendulum was only less than or equal to zero, so we're not quite there yet but that's pretty nice. What about exponential stability? Can you get s exponential stability from a Lyapunov function? The difference with exponential stability, right, is that you wanna say not just that I'm gonna get there, but I'm gonna get there at some rate, right? that the, um, is less than some, um, some rate. Turns out you can get that from a simple Lyapunov type argument. Okay, if you have a V of X that's greater than zero, and you have V dot of X, what's, what are you gonna want on V dot of X, right? If you wanna say I'm gonna converge at some rate, then you want V dot to be going downhill at some possible rate, okay? In particular, you want V dot to be related to V. For some alpha greater than zero. Okay, if you have this condition, that implies that uh, you know, the solutions as I evolve are going to be bounded by this. All right, so if we can find an energy-like function for a system, there's a lot we can say about it. We can talk about whether the system will converge to a fixed point, whether, you know, in any of the different ways, or we can even talk about a rate. In fact, these tools are used in all kinds of uh, fields, right? Not just dynamics and control, but you know, you see this, for instance, in the analysis of optimization algorithms of talking about, you know, can I bound the rate at which my gradient descent algorithm will converge or something like this, okay? These are 
very general, powerful tools. All right, let me do some examples to make sure those sink in. The simplest example would be, let's just say, take our linear system, x dot equals negative x. Okay, that's our stable system. If I plot the flow on a line, if I plot x versus x dot, I just have a line going through the origin, and we know that it's got a stable equilibrium at the origin. We know that from graphical analysis, but that graphical analysis doesn't scale to complicated systems, okay? So I want to prove that stability via Lyapunov. Let's take V of x as x squared. I hope you see a, a pattern. Every time we talk about the long-term behavior you know, some sort of energy-like function or cost-to-go function for a linear system, we tend to get a quadratic function for these linear systems. That's not an accident. Those are, those are obviously, those are connected. Okay, so <clears throat> I can draw this quadratic function here, and if I try to figure out what V dot is, V dot of x, you know, V of x is just a, is no time dependence directly. V dot of x is partial V, partial x, f of x. So in this case, it's 2x negative x, which is just negative x squared. So that is a negative definite function, right? I can use a strict inequality. I mean, it's at zero, it's zero, and then it's less, strictly less than zero for all other x, okay? So the existence of this x squared is enough, should be enough to convince you that the, the origin is stable and that it's actually asymptotically stable. Since this function is also radially unbounded and it's true, this is true everywhere, it's actually globally, it's gas. It's globally asymptotically stable. I missed a two here, didn't I? Minus two x squared. Now this is also, you could write this as negative two v of x, right? So it's actually exponentially stable. With rate at two, with alpha equals two. These are super powerful tools. That's a simple example, but this is gonna go the distance for us, okay? <clears throat> yes? Uh, for x minus equal stability, doesn't v dot of x just need to be less than equal to negative a v of x rather than equal to? Thank you, yes. Definitely. That was a typo, thank you. Great question. So yeah, the question is, I'm just, I'm just saying if you if you can find a v, uh, but I haven't given you any indication of like how we're going to find v. Okay. 
So in a minute, we'll talk about the connection to cost to go functions, but we started the cost to go functions the same way, right? That we said, I can prove a system's optimal if I can give you a cost to go function that satisfies these conditions, and then we give you some algorithms for trying to find the cost to go functions, right? We're gonna do the same thing here. There's gonna be a suite of computational algorithms that will help us search for V that satisfies these, these properties. Um, and they live in this interesting sweet spot where you can, uh, that, that, that you can solve pretty complicated systems uh, and, and get an absolute certification, okay? But the other connection I can give you now is just the connection to energy, right? I think a lot of times there's a mechanical energy is a, is a good surrogate for these, for stability, uh, right? So even for very complicated systems, if you can just look at the total energy of the system, that can often drive you towards a stability type argument. Okay, one more simple example, um, but it wa I wanna say, so we talked about lo local stability and global stability, but there's also this notion of regional stability, right? So what would it mean if, if we have V of X is, um, you know, ha satisfies these conditions just over some part of state space? Not all of it. I'd like to say more than just the, you know, there's the epsilon argument, but I can't say the full argument. And in fact, that's gonna be the case that we are, live in almost all the time in robotics because you know, when speed goes to infinity, you know, robots do break and they fall down and stuff like that. We're, and we're not gonna be able to say that it's gonna be good for all possible x, okay? What we really wanna be able to say is that for reasonable initial conditions, the system's gonna succeed. So I need one more tool to talk about the intermediate here, which is regional stability. I want these conditions to hold um, I, let me just try to think of shorthand for this v and v dot conditions must hold over some invariant set instance, like a most common way to, to say this would be to say I've got V of X greater than zero. Oftentimes that one's not the hard one, but, and I say um, V dot of X for X in, for instance, um, picture that I probably just erased, um, right? If I can say that there's some sub-level set of V, which is what I talked about for the invariant sets before, for which V dot is always less than or zero, then this can be an invariant set. Meaning that if X, if I have an invariant set G, then if x0 is in G, then for all t greater than or equal to zero, x of t is also in, in G. And that's the picture I tried to give you before, saying that if I have I might have some big region of state space, x1, x2. It might be that everywhere inside here, I know that v dot of x is less than or equal to zero. But I can't, but just having v dot of x less than or equal to zero is actually not enough. And let me, I'll, I'll draw it in just a second here, okay? but. What I really care about is the combination of V dot of X less than zero and V of X less than rho.
And I can say that this set is an invariant set, and this set could define the basin of attraction or the region of attraction of that fixed plane. Okay, so why is that? So certainly when I'm inside here, if V is less than rho and V dot is always going downhill, then I'm going to stay inside that blue region. We agree. That's, we agree that that part's invariant. I think that part's simple. But if I start outside it, it might be that I'm going downhill. I mean, it's still true that I'm going downhill, but there's not a guarantee that I'm going to enter this set before I leave this set. I could go downhill, but actually leave the v dot less than or equal to zero set. Okay? There's no reason why I couldn't go out here and then lose this condition and blow up. Just knowing that v dot's less than zero for some set of x is only useful if I know if that set where it, I, v dot is less than zero is something I stay inside, right? If I'm going downhill for a minute, but then I leave the set where I'm going downhill, all bets are off. So I need some condition to say, not only am I going downhill, but I'm going to stay in the region where I'm going downhill. Right? And that, that condition is this set invariance. And the standard one would be to use that same Lyapunov function, because this proves the invariance. Sorry. I really have to wear more proper shirts. Does that make sense? Uh, we can do another simple example to make that work. Remember this example that I used in the flow on the line lecture. This is the one that goes around the origin that looks like negative x, away from the origin that looks like x cubed. So it looks like this. And in fact, that's it. 1, negative 1, Lows here are positive, lows here are negative, so this is a stable fixed point. This is a, these are unstable fixed points because the flows here are going to blow up the other way to the outside. Okay, so what I'd like to be able to say about this system is that for all x less than or equal to, you know, from between negative 1 and 1, will converge at some rate, potentially, to that to the origin. Right, that's the kind of argument I'd like to, to be a sophisticated argument that I could make would be, you know, these are the sets. This is the set that's guaranteed to converge to that fixed plane. And I can do that with Lyapunov analysis, OK? In fact, the x squared is still our friend. Let's see what happens when v of x equals x squared. Now I have v dot of x, 2x times x dot. x dot is negative x plus x cubed. So this thing, this function, is less than 0 for x between negative 1 and 1. It's 0 when x equals plus or minus 1. And it's greater than 0 when x is outside.
Similarly, this, you know, so the argument I can make here, if I want to prove that that's the region of attraction here, is I can say that v dot of x is less than or equal to 0 for this region. And that region is, a, um, is an invariant set because I can say v of x less than 1. Right, this is the, these are exactly the states where v of x is less than 1. I don't want that to be abstract. I think it should be very physical, right? So is, is that I've got some, I've got some, some bowl here. I've got a quadratic bowl. The dynamics are such that if I'm less than 1, then I know I'm going to be going downhill in this bowl. That's what this says. V dot, the dynamics will take me Outside, I'm actually going to go, um, like if you plot v dot, if you plot this function, it looks like this. Okay, so it's negative for the, whenever I'm in here, it's positive out here. So out here, I'm going to escape. So I can't say anything about that. But the existence of this v, when I start below this threshold, I'll stay below this threshold and I'll converge to that origin. So this is a way to use Lyapunov analysis to certify that this is at least inside the region of attraction Lots of good tools, right? Now we're going to use this. We're going to use this to be able to um, to solve even complicated systems. So I think, like the most complicated system, I don't. If you remember, I showed you when we talked about LQR. I, I remembered. I showed you Atlas balancing on its toe using LQR, right? So we used a linear controller to stabilize a very nonlinear system. That was already cool. But what's even cooler is that we're going to give you an algorithm that can actually prove, find some, some inner approximation of the regions which if you started inside this region, Atlas won't fall down. Right? So for a big complicated system. And we're going to use this tool to do it. We're going to find a V such that for some region, less than, you know, less than V less than 1, I can find V dot less than 0. Yes? Yes, so, so um, this is the distinction about, okay, this, that's actually a really, really good question. Okay, so and I just talked about stability in the sense of Lyapunov. I didn't talk about global or local stability. Stability in the sense of Lyapunov doesn't really make sense uh, over some region, right? So if the game is you pick an epsilon, I pick a delta, I could tell you, go ahead, pick a really big epsilon, but I could always still choose a really small delta. In the, in the definition of, the, of ISL, there wasn't any notion of global or local in there. Because all it says is that you can pick a really small one, but, it, but you're free to pick a small one even if I'm asking you to. So, so <clears throat> yeah, ISL doesn't capture local or global. All right, so I went from there to local and global for asymptotic stability. And that's where we put conditions about when V satisfies these conditions. And now this is the last refinement where this is now over a region. It's, there's local, global, and there's over a region. And this is, that's this case. Thank you for asking that.
Okay, there's one more idea that we need to make this work for the pendulum, okay? And that's LaSalle's theorem. It actually takes the, the, the board you just reminded us of, of the, um, the ISL condition. So the V of X is greater than zero, V dot of X is only less than or equal to zero. Positive semi-definite. What we said before from the direct Lyapunov argument was that X, the origin is ISL, okay? Is, is the origin is stable. But we can actually say something a little bit stronger with just those conditions. What we can say is that as the V of X, um, this allows us to say something slightly stronger that it says X will go to the largest invariance set. with v dot of x uh, equals zero. Okay, so I need to unpack that. So this is the limit as t goes to infinity, x of t will go to the lar it will be in the largest invariant set with x dot equals uh, v dot of x equals zero. Okay? So what happens for the pendulum. I can make this, I think I can make this thing in the, in the pendulum example. So we said that um, energy is less than or equal to zero. It's zero whenever theta dot equals zero. But it's also zero every time I change directions. What's the largest invariant set where V dot of X equals zero? These points here where I have theta dot equals zero are not invariant sets. Because even though I'm here, a moment later I'm gonna leave that set, okay? So the largest invariant set with V dot equal to zero is like the intersection of the two sets, you know, V dot of X equals zero. In this, in the, in the simple case, you know, and x where f of x equals zero for pendulum. I think there are more general cases, but. The only way to have an invariant set is if um, I'm also at a fixed point here, okay? So the, the argument is even if I'm only, if I have an energy function which is going downhill less than or equal to zero, okay, even though I'm going, uh, my energy dot is zero instantaneously here, since I'm gonna leave that set in just a moment and start going downhill again, then if I, if I, the total contribution of that V dot less than zero is gonna get me down to this set. And this is the argument that allows me to say that this, the pendulum is asymptotically stable. This limit as, x, as t goes to zero is in an asymptotic stability statement, and it's talking about the asymptotic stability of the largest invariant set, which is a funny way to say, basically, in the most cases, all of the fixed points that have v dot equals zero. Okay, that's a lot of, I know that's a lot of uh, machinery and we'll make it work, I promise, in examples um, a lot over the next couple of lectures. Let me make sure I make the point though of how it's related to Hamilton Jacoby. To our Bellman equation, to our dynamic programming, right? 
Bellman equation, remember, min over u, L of x u plus partial j partial x half of x u. If I substitute in u star, then remember what I said. I said partial j partial x f of x u star has to equal negative lx u star. And this is the this is the same as saying j dot, right? Okay. This is a partial differential equation. That's so why we used value iteration to approximate, you know, on a mesh when we could, with a neural network when we when it got bigger. Okay? But this is a strict equality, and that's a hard equation to solve. Compare that now to v dot of x is less than equal to zero, right? This says, this says I have to go downhill at some specific rate in order to be optimal. Lyapunov is just a generalization of this, if you want, that says I don't need to go downhill at some rate. I'm just happy to go downhill at all. So if your cost functions are positive, which a lot of our cost functions are, right? if your cost functions are positive, then every cost to go function is also a Lyapunov function. Okay. And when you think about like the grid world and you think about the map, you know, that the, the, the cost to go function makes as you, as you solve it, right? We're going to go downhill on that in the same way that we would with a Lyapunov function, those potential functions, right? But, but finding a Lyapunov function is way easier than finding the specific PDE that satisfies this differential equation. I can find any function that's going negative. It's relaxed that strict equality into an inequality. And this is why we jump complexity classes. We can make lower approximations of this that can be, can be tight, can be strict, and that can be just, way, you know, you can potentially, for systems that would have a very complicated cost-to-go function, you can often find a very simple Lyapunov function that certifies it's, it's sufficient. And that's kind, of, that's kind of what you'd expect, right? To, to be able to say, I've just accomplished the task should be way easier than proving that the thing's optimal. Is that actually right? But so far, I've, I've left, um, I've just done f of x for the entire lecture. So I'll just end with a fun example of how energy type thinking can lead you to a pretty good controller for swinging up a pendulum or a cart pole or an acrobat. It used to be that this, that if you were doing control for a nonlinear system, you weren't writing, you know, bigger neural networks. You were thinking harder about coming up with a Lyapunov function. And it would be, you know, you'd get a new paper if you came, if, you know, if you had a system, it's like, you know, I've got a quad rotor, you know, doing X and Y and Z, and I need to find a Lyapunov function. If you, found, if you thought of a Lyapunov function, you know, then you wrote a paper about that, and you showed that it that was that the act of conjuring these Lyapunov functions was 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 a lot of the work before. Okay, now we have algorithms that'll do a lot of that work for us. But um, <clears throat> okay, so let's do energy swing up. For the pendulum. Okay, so. I want to stabilize these fixed points, right? So, I the the closed loop system, or sorry, the the the, op the passive system has a has a fixed point here that is stable. These are unstable. I want to stabilize these fixed points. How do I do it? Okay. I'm going to try to come up with a Lyapunov function that drives me into this special orbit. 
This thing here is called the homoclinic orbit. A, a, you could call some people would call it a heteroclinic orbit, but it's a it's an orbit uh, that visits a fixed point would be a homoclinic orbit. If you consider this the same fixed point, you call it a homoclinic orbit. If you consider those separate fit, fixed points, uh, that would be a heteroclinic orbit. Okay, but that's the same fixed point just wrapped around on itself. So I'm going to call that a homoclinic orbit. Okay, so I'm going to try to come up with a Lyapunov function that will have me converging to this homoclinic orbit. The homoclinic orbit is defined by the states that have energy MGL. Certainly the fixed points here, and this is the contour of constant energy, where the energy of the system is just MGL. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to imagine a Lyapunov function I would like and then come up with a controller that will make that Lyapunov function valid, okay? So the driven pendulum, I'll even just leave that term off for a second. Time derivative now, I used to have b theta dot. Now I get u theta dot by the same der derivation. Which is exactly, if you're into mechanics or whatever, that's exactly what you expect. This is torque times velocity. That should be the rate of change of energy. Okay? No surprise there, but it's nice that it falls out exactly at that derivation. So let me construct a Lyapunov function that would do what I want, okay? What if I choose the energy of the system minus my desired energy squared, and I'll set my desired energy to be MGL. Can I come up with a controller that makes that a valid Lyapunov function? If I take the time derivative of this, v dot of x, that's just going to be, this is a constant, so I get 2, um, sorry, the 2 is gone too from this. I get energy dot x times this e of x minus e desired. I'm going to shorthand this to be e tilde. It's like my error in energy, E tilde. E dot of x is just U theta dot. So if I choose a controller u equals negative k theta dot e tilde for some k greater than zero, then what have I got? So if I stick this in here, that gives me that v dot of x is now negative k theta dot e tilde squared, okay, which is theta dot squared, sorry. That controller was chosen just for, uh, you know, for the sake of crossing out the terms and making that a, negative, a nice negative function. Right? That Lyapunov function completely inspired this controller. And it implies that E tilde, um, that basically E tilde goes to zero. 
very simple controller, k theta dot e tilde, will cause this system to pump up energy when e tilde is less than zero. Okay. And when it's outside, it'll take energy out in order to try to get back onto the system when it's like this. If it can, it'll take energy out in order to get there. It's actually going to go like this onto the other one. And it's a beautiful swing up controller for the pendulum. K times theta dot, roughly. I want, you know, whatever velocity I'm currently moving in, if I'm inside the, if I'm inside this orbit, I should push with my velocity. If I'm outside that orbit, I'm gonna push against my velocity. That's basically it. Okay? If E dot is greater than zero, then I'm just gonna I'm, that basically, yeah. When I'm outside, I'm going to push against velocity. When I'm inside, I'm going to push with velocity. That's it. Okay. And by the um, by the Lyapunov argument, that stabilizes the largest invariant set, which is this homoclinic orbit. It doesn't actually stabilize the fixed point. It just guarantees that I'm on this homoclinic orbit. Okay. So typically what we'll do is we'll use this controller to get close. Once we're on the homoclinic orbit, we'll ride it in and we'll turn on LQR when we're in the, the region of attraction of the LQR controller. Now, why is this a good controller? K theta dot roughly, you know, modulated by E. Okay, it's a, we'll, come, we'll, we'll talk more about like what happens in terms of robustness to model parameters in general, more general control problems, but just think for a minute about how robust this controller is. Right? If you don't know the mass of the pendulum, if you don't know the length of the pendulum, you know, that's gonna make, maybe my energy estimate is gonna be a little bit off. I might stabilize an orbit that's a little too small or a little too large, okay? But I'm, I'm gonna do the right thing for really bizarre, I mean, maybe you should make sure your length is positive, right? And my mass is positive. But if you get the sign bus roughly right, this is going to get you into a, you know, this is going to stabilize some orbit, which is extremely close to that homo homoclinic orbit and probably good enough to turn on your LQR controller, right? So there's like no dependence on parameters. And here, there's a little bit of, you know, just in estimating my, my energy error. Yes? Yes. Right. In this, like, the optimal functional energy based control, like, uh, we don't even have, like, a regulator for the magnitude of the control. That's a great question. So, I was just wondering whether this actually, like, equals that in this actual control. Well, uh, yeah, so let me ask you guys. So, so, what happens if you had a torque limit, right? If I, if I, if U is only between negative one and one, how well does this controller do? And how, do, how well does my Lyapunov function do? Right? So, actually, my Lyapunov function is going to be fine, right? So, if you think about what would happen if I were to saturate this, V dot will still go down. Even if I saturate U, it's just gonna take longer to get there. So actually, in terms of robustness to torque limits, this is an extremely good solution. Right? It's just gonna pump up more and more, you know, take more and more times to get around, but it's always gonna be pushing in the right direction. P set and trying to come up with the, um, the cost to go function for the pendulum in a, with a neural network, you know, you should look for signs of something that looks like this, you know, this Lyapunov function. I think that's what you want it to roughly look like. You want it to be roughly trying to stabilize this homoclinic orbit. That's the, almost the optimal thing to do, but it's derived directly from Lyapunov and super robust. Good. So next time we'll talk about all the ways that you solve for Lyapunov functions and, and construct them. They've just come out of the thin air today, but... It's a lot of good machinery.